So you are on this tricky React interview and you are asked about a seemingly easy mistake. This counter component on every click should increment its value by 2, but it only adds 1. You might know how to correct it with a callback, but it's where the real interview only begins. Can you explain precisely why the first version doesn't work? What are the specific rules of React's execution model that are responsible? We can examine what is going on by logging count value at each step. Initially, we have a value of 0, but surprisingly, after each consecutive set count, it is still 0. This situation may cause a lot of frustration unless you understand the whole picture. So let's imagine that you are a JavaScript engine, parsing this code line by line. First, we are calling useState function with argument 0, which is the initial state value. useState hook is returning an array of two values that we are destructuring as count and set count. Within the structuring, we are also declaring them as const variables. Can we declare them with let keyword? Sure we can, but it doesn't make much sense, because we shouldn't change the value of the state variable directly. Have you ever asked yourself what would happen if we try? We change the const declaration to let keyword, and we are changing set count calls to direct assignments. Counter component is being rendered for the first time. We declare variable count, which will have a default value of 0. We declare increment twice handler, and then we return React element. I say React element because there is an important difference between element and component. Component is the whole function which often initializes state, side effects, creates event handlers, etc. While element is only the JSX returned from component, which is a description of what should be rendered by the browser. So React tells the browser to render this element with the count value 0. The browser paints the component. The user clicks on a button. Now increment twice function is being called. We can read the count variable, it's 0. 0 plus 1 equals 1, so we assign 1 to the count variable. We can log the count variable now and we can see its value is already 1. Proceeding to the second assignment. We read the value of count, which is 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, so we assign 2 to the count variable, logging it again and its value now equals 2. Ok, so contrary to the previous example with set count, now we see that the count value is being updated at each step of the increment twice execution. So can it be our solution? Can we just drop set state from our React apps and use regular JavaScript assignments instead? We forgot one very important thing. We didn't tell React that the value of the count has changed. To do this we need to use React's API, setCount function. So currently we have an internal variable with value 2. But React doesn't know that it should re-render our component. The browser doesn't know that the value of the count has changed. So the browser does nothing. And we still see the old value 0 on our page. And this is actually only a part of the problem, because even if we had a magical force update function that could trigger re-render, we still need to remember that React is rendering every component every time from scratch. Anytime any of your data changes, just blow away your view completely and re-render it from scratch. So the first declaration with the count variable would be called again, and the value would be accessed from the useState hook. UseState hook and React are not aware that we have changed our local variable count. New count variable is created from scratch and assigned initial value 0. So JavaScript engine is actually no longer tracking a reference to the old value because it was overwritten and our new 0 value would be again painted by the browser. So set state has two important functions. It saves our new value in a state managed by React so it can be remembered when we re-render every component every time from scratch. And it also signals React to re-render component after a change is made. So changes can be actually painted by the browser and we can see results of code executed by event handlers in the DOM. Ok, now we understand why we need to use set state instead of trivial JavaScript assignment. But when we've used assignment, our count variable was actually updated immediately after. So why calling set state doesn't work the same way? Let's try to analyze line by line. We have our count and set count created with const keyword. We declare increment twice handler and then we return react element with an initial value 0. The browser paints the component. The user clicks on a button. Increment twice is being called. We want to call set count, but first we have to compute the value that we want to pass to this function. We check what is inside count, this value is 0, 0 plus 1 equals 1, so we call set count with value 1. Set count is an asynchronous function, which means it is not executed immediately. 
In fact, a very important rule to understand and remember is that React waits until all code in the event handler has run before processing state updates. In other words, calling setState function is not equivalent to the execution of this function. We can imagine that this first set count with value 1 is being added to a virtual queue, where it has to wait before the whole increment twice function execution ends. So now we proceed to the second line. Again, we want to call setState, so we access the value of the variable count. We now know that it is still zero because our first set count is still waiting in the queue and underlying value assignment was not executed yet. Zero plus one equals one. So we call again set count with value one. This second set count updater is also being placed into the virtual queue. And this is the end of this function. So we can now go to our queue and start executing those state updaters. Now we see that we have two exactly identical operations to set count variable to one. This is translated by React to simple assignments. So assign variable count with value one, then again, assign variable count with value one. And this is why our count value was only incremented by one. We know the fix. So let's trace how it impacts the execution and solves our problem. Starting from scratch, we are declaring const variables count and set count, then increment twice handler, and we return React element with value zero. The browser paints the component. The user clicks on a button. Increment twice is called. We call set count with a callback. But this callback is not immediately executed. It is passed to React's internal queue as a function reference. Now we call the second set count and we again pass it a callback, which is added to our queue. Increment twice handler's code has been finished, so now we can proceed to the queue. This time we don't have a simple value, but a function. And we have to pass it current state value, which is zero. 0 plus 1 equals 1, so React will execute assignment with the computed value 1. Second function. Again, React have to pass it the current state value. The important difference now is that we are in the context of React's memory. In this context, the count is already updated because the underlying assignments to the variable was executed. So we get the current value 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2. So React will execute assignment with the computed value 2. The queue is now finished, so we trigger a new counter component render. We are declaring const variable count, and use state is returning a current value from React's memory, which is 2. We declare a new increment twice function, and we return the new React element with count value 2. Browser paints our component with updated value, and this is how the problem has been solved. One last important remark is that React didn't render counter component again after the first set count. If it did, the browser would have to render this component twice, after only one user click. So React is waiting for all updates from an event to be handled, before rendering the component once. And this behavior is called batching state updates. In my other video, I discuss why React uses class name instead of a class attribute. Let me know if you want more content like this by simply hitting the subscribe button. Thanks.